Hey VC, how's it going? Right, okay, this is a thread response to a video that Richard McCook uploaded a couple of days ago, where he's asked everybody to show their seven inch double packs. Now, I love this because I've said before that I think that the seven inch double pack, particularly in a gatefold sleeve, is the most attractive of any of the vinyl formats. So yeah, I'm all over this. Right, so starting off with this, this is the Beatles with a magical mystery tour. I have two copies of this, one in stereo, I think that's a stereo one in mono. Now famously when the Magical Mystery Tour film was shown here in the UK, I think it was shown Boxing Day 1967, the majority of the, the country saw it in black and white so the impact of the film was a little bit lost but there's no denying that the, the music was absolutely fantastic so this includes six songs, three songs on each, each EP. Obviously housing this sort of um, this booklet and you also get a nice booklet showing photographs from the film and other bits of information, so very cool. But in America, it didn't come out as an EP. Uh, the Magical Mystery Tour album included these six songs on one side of the LP and some B-sides and singles on the other side. So it's a great album, but disappointingly, when the Beatles put out the, the, the CDs of the UK-issued albums, they also included the American Magical Mystery Tour version. So in doing so, this original EP double pack has sort of been forgotten about a little bit because we all look to the American LP version, but which is a real shame because I think this is a really nice thing. So there you go. Right, okay, so a couple of things that Richard McCook showed in his video. First up, the jam with Going Underground. This, of course, is a, a double A-side single with um, Dreams of Children, I have to think about that. Dreams of Children's on the other side, but it also includes an extra single, including three live tracks, Away From The Numbers, The Modern World, and Dan, Dan In The Tube Station At Midnight. A nice thing, the music's great. It's just a shame that they've just put it in a standard single sleeve. This was the Jam's first number one single. Then onto the Jam's final number one single. So this is Beat Surrender, 1982, the biggest band in the country and Paul Weller announced that he was breaking up the band. This came out, went straight into number one, at a time when getting straight into number one was, well, it meant something, you know, very few acts had done it up to this point, so it was a big deal. Now, this, ver this record, this particular version, with the extra single, is really important to me. A life-changing record? Maybe, I don't know, but it includes a second single of soul cover version, so you've got Move On Up by Curtis Mayfield, Stoned Out of My Mind by The Shy Lights, and War by um, um, Edwin Starr, of course. Now, after buying this record, as a teenager this would be, this would be in the 90s, I went out and picked up a copy of The Best of Curtis Mayfield. And from there on in, I've been collecting soul music ever since. So the last 30, 35 years, I dread to think about how much time I spent looking for soul records or thinking about soul music or listening to soul music or talking about soul music or making stupid videos about soul music. I don't know. Would I have done it if I hadn't heard this record? I don't know. Life changing? Maybe. Right. Okay, two more that um, Richard McCook showed in his video. Generals and Majors by XTC. Again, a nice gatefold double pack. I'll just open that up. Very nice. And this is one that both Richard and Nick's Vinyl Butty showed in his video as well as a response to this, this thread. This is Towers of London, also by XTC. Two individual sleeve records, day and night, in this plastic sleeve, which has the London skyline on it. Very nice, great single as well, so cool. <laughs> Okay, so next up, Echo and the Bunnymen with their single Seven Seas. A lovely gatefold sleeve there. 
can see it's got a bit of a booklet inside as well. And this also features some tracks that we recorded for a TV series. So you've got their version of All You Need Is Love, The Killing Moon, a re-recorded version of that, Stars and Stars, and Villiers Terrace. I picked this up quite recently, it's only a couple of quid, but very nice. If you fancy a little bit of um, new wave of British heavy metal, there's Diamond Head, I think they're from Wolverhampton, so not far from, from me here. Um, yeah, their song, In the Heat of the Night. I saw Metallica I know, about 10, 15 years ago playing Birmingham, and after they finished their set, they came out and did an encore just of Diamond Head covers. I think that was just because obviously they were playing in Birmingham and they were a local band. Prince with one of his best songs, certainly a top three Prince single for me this. Girls and Boys, 1986. A nice double pack because this features a couple of classic B-sides. Um, she's always in my hair. 17 Days. If you know anything about Prince, you'll know those tunes. And uh, both of them absolutely killer. I'm going to do a quick needle drop on, on one of these tracks here. So this is Cool and the Gang with their single Jones vs. Jones. But it also includes three other classic Cool and the Gang tracks. Summer Madness, Funky Stuff and Hollywood Swinging. I see a little gatefold wallet sleeve there. Very nice. So the last few, this is Bill Nelson with Youth of Nation on Fire. I haven't played that one in a long time, but uh, there you go. Okay, John Fox with No One Driving. This is from the Metamatic album, isn't it? 1980. That's the record that features Underpass, the sort of his big hit. Um, yeah, a nice fold out portrait there. Yeah, that's a nice little thing, that. Okay, this is one that everybody showed, The Skids with Working for the Yankee Dollar. This is nice because it includes their, their version of All the Young Dudes. I know Richard said he didn't like it. I quite like that version, actually. Um, I saw the Skids play last November for the first time. I'd never seen them before. They were supporting From the Jam, which is Bruce Foxton, the original um, bass player in, in the Jam, his version of the band now, which, which, is, which are okay. But the Skids are fantastic. So obviously the room is quite a small room, just full of old punks, pogering around for 45 minutes, the likes of Masquerade, working for the Yankee Dollar, um, Into the Valley, of course they finished the set with Into the Valley, but they went off and then Richard Jobson, the singer, came back on his own. And he just said, you know, just bear with me a minute, just, uh, just give me a chance. And he stood there and for five minutes, he read the full poem of Wilson Matilda. Now this was Remembrance Day weekend, obviously that was a Saturday night, the Sunday was Remembrance Sunday. And I kid you not that there was not a dry eye in the house. Loads of old punks in their 50s and early 60s just reduced to a, a blubbering wreck. It was extraordinary. So yeah, I've never seen anything like it. It's one of the most memorable gigs I've ever been to. So there you go, that's the, the skids with working for the Yankee Dollar. Okay, and finally, and I'll play a clip from this, Tubeway Army. I expected Nick's vinyl buddy to show this. I don't think he did. Uh, Tubeway Army with That's Too Bad and Oh, I Didn't Say. And I like the extra track on, on the single here, Bombers. So I'll play a clip of that. So there you go. A great idea for a thread, Richard. Just an excuse to show a, lo a load of seven inch double packs, which as I say, are the most attractive vinyl format of them all. So cheers. <laughs>